governor's plan to have cities and towns start paying into the teacher pension fund for the unfunded liability. Is that a good idea or not? I, I think it's seriously misguided. What a lot of people don't understand is teacher's pension is the only retirement plan that they have. They do not have Social Security or anything of that nature. They contribute over 7% of their salary, and it's always been historically that the state contributes the remaining portion. Mm -hmm. To ask the locals to contribute to that partnership now in these tough economic times could have serious, serious problems at the local level regarding public education budgets. You said something the other day about it could cause, I believe you said, unintended consequences. What do you mean by that? Well, if this new bill is going to go to a city and town, they may be looking for the cost reduction on the Board of Education side to help pay for the new cost that the state is asking them to pay. So our fear is that they will take it, they will take the education budget and reduce it in order to accommodate this new cost to the state, and that's going to create problems with reduction of programs, increased class sizes, things of that nature. What did you think about um, the governor's proposal for a 50% tax exemption on teacher pensions if teachers remain in the state? Well, that's the case that's been active for a variety of years, only because, again, teachers do not get any Social Security. Their only retirement plan is that of the state teacher's uh, retirement system. And so to deal with the issue of equity, for lack of a better term, the governor acted in what we consider to be uh, the best interest of the retired teachers to have them stay here and to acknowledge their fact that they do not get Social Security. Tell me a little bit about um, the survey that you recently uh, came up with that talked about investing in public schools. It was a survey of voters. I think what's important to note is that the our survey, our poll in effect, scientific poll, showed that the public in the state of Connecticut wants a budget that's fair for all of us. And they don't want to see, they want to invest in children's families and public education. They don't want to see a rollback or cuts only in this budget. So uh, my fear is that we won't see that in this budget when the public is clearly uh, in favor, as I said, of not seeing our children, families, and public education hurt by this budget, and we fear that that's what's going to happen. One of the things that uh, the union is looking for is more uh, oversight for charter schools. What would you like that to take the form of? What would that look like? I think basically when you get to charter school management organizations, which uh, has uh, come to fruition in the state of Connecticut, we just want to know what money is going from the classroom to that management organization for specifically what purpose. Right now, there is no such transparency. So having 10% of every dollar go to a charter management organization with no accountability associated with that is troublesome. 